think my boyfriend is a narcissist. What should I do? Disclaimer is not my story town. Send me on Instagram. Brace yourselves because this is one messed up story. Five months ago, my bestie and I show up to this party. Think really rich people living in the Hamptons. A la Great Gatsby, but with TikTok and cell phones. My bestie and I look fabulous. Out of nowhere, this guy comes up to me and starts talking to me like he knew me. I was actually confused. I thought maybe we had met before and I was embarrassed that I didn't recognize him. So I entertained him for about 10 minutes. That's when he told me that he lied. That he'd never met me before, but he was pretending so that he could actually talk to me. I was actually charmed. You see, he's English and he was in town for about a week visiting his friends. The very rich people who were hosting the party. He charmed me so much that night. By the end of the party, he started love bombing me. No, I didn't know he was doing it at the time. He was giving me every single compliment he could think of. How pretty I was, how beautiful my hair was, how I was the prettiest girl in the entire party. They were very generic compliments. But he still managed to charm me. That's when he said, can I kiss you? I said no. And then he kissed me. I was stunned, but I kind of liked it. For the rest of that week, he started showing up everywhere I was. After about two weeks, he convinced me to be his girlfriend. But then he started making me feel bad for the people I was hanging out with. You see, I have a lot of guy friends. And he would say things like, if you love me, you wouldn't be hanging out with all these guys. And the love bombing continued every single day, every hour of the day. He worshipped me. Before I knew it, I was prioritizing him and only him. I stopped hanging out with friends. And he started criticizing my appearance and changing the way that I was dressing. Then one day, he told me that I was stupid for not realizing that he was lying to me all the time. When I asked him what he meant, he said, wow, then you really are stupid. Two days later, I found out he's not even English. He's from Ohio. Everything he said is a lie. Then he love bombs me and follows it up with criticism. And when it comes to intimacy, he makes me feel like I'm not good enough, but then he always wants it. And last night he told me that he's more attractive than I am. And if that bothers me, can someone tell me what a narcissist actually is? I think I'm right about this. What should I do? Self-care sister out. I slept with my best friend's husband on their wedding day. Story time. I have a best friend who we'll call Amy. This girl is like my sister. I love and care about her so much. But there is just one small problem. I am absolutely in love with her husband. Actually really, really complicated. So circling back to when I first met Amy, this was about 10 years ago. I also met Steve and Steve was actually my friend first. And I went and told Amy all about this guy that I'd met who I really, really liked. He said, I really want to get to know him more. So I decided to invite Steve to the movies with us one day. And by the end of the night, Amy had made a move on him and they ended up kissing in the cinema, sat next to me. So when the film was done, Steve went his way and me and Amy got in the car together. She said that as we weren't dating, she thought it was just fair game. And I knew that at this moment, I would have to distance myself from both of them. And obviously, Amy started dating Steve. So a year later, things started to change between me and Steve. Me and Steve found each other alone together. Steve actually ended up telling me that I was the one he had always wanted. <laughs> He told me that he'd gotten really, really excited when I invited him to the movies because Amy was the one that made a move on him. He thought that I had set it up for my best friend. And I was like, no, that's absolutely crazy. I absolutely really liked you as well. That's why I invited you. It changed the overall chemistry of our relationship but we never ever acted on it. Fast forward 10 years later. We were all in the same hotel, but we're all getting ready in different rooms. So all the boys went to one room, all the girls went to another. Amy ended up sending me to the boys room because she needed to get a charger out of Steve's bag. When I got there, Steve opened the door. I was like, I'm so sorry for barging in on the lab time. He was like, no, no, it's not a problem. So I got into the room and I realized that none of the other guys were there. And then I felt a hand on my waist. <laughs> He was like, I just can't keep myself away from you. I can't help but think it should be you that I marry. Now listen, don't judge me. After 10 years of liking Steve, I was not, there was no urges I was fighting off. 10 years. And I was like, well, they're not married yet. So it's fair game. It was really good. Quick, but really good. Had to get back to the girls' room. And now I'm so glad that even though it was on their wedding day, we had that moment together. So does that make me a terrible person? Am I wrong for refusing to move in with my boyfriend and friend who can't afford the new place without me? I, 25 female, moved in with my boyfriend, 30 male, to help out with him financially. He got stuck outside of his home country and I was well established. One month, he asked me to help with the bills and I did. The next month, I proposed to move in together since I couldn't afford to cover my bills and part of his. He didn't want to leave his friend, 32 male, with whom he shared an apartment. So I agreed to move in with them. Anyways, I moved to the smaller room without an end suite bathroom with my boyfriend. And the friend was in the bigger one with the bathroom inside. At first, I thought my boyfriend and I would be sharing bills in half. So we both paid half of the rent. His friend paid the other half. And electricity and water three ways. However, the friend asked if I could pay a third of the rent. I didn't know if it was standard, but neither of them were working and it wasn't a burden for me. It was about the same as I was paying for my own apartment before. So I agreed. 
I did state that once the rent period at the apartment was up, we would move so my boyfriend and I could have a bigger room with the bathroom inside. They both agreed like, yeah, yeah. Once the rent was up, they started looking for apartments. We found a house we liked, but it struck me as odd. As the house, although bigger, also had one room with end suite and one bathroom outside. I thought, oh, their friend will take the smaller room this time. As you can guess, their friend refused to take the smaller room. I asked my boyfriend about it, and he said, oh, I don't know, let me ask. Well, the friend lost it, saying he wasn't going to take a smaller room. There was no way he was going to share his bathroom with guests and that it was just not happening. I pointed out our previous agreement. We had lived in the smaller room, two people, and that if switching for fairness wasn't enough reason, we paid for a more uncomfortable space, two-thirds of the rent. Lastly, the guest, friends of my boyfriend and friend, tended to pee on the toilet seat where I'm supposed to sit, and that's unhygienic and disgusting. I don't want to come back from work to have to clean up the mess of someone who doesn't know how to aim. The friend then started gaslighting me and being rude. I then said that I wasn't moving in with them. For not only the attitude to address the situation, but also the disregard for the financial help I was providing and concerns. Then he called me an asshole because he had already paid the deposit and signed the contract without informing me that they were stuck in a place they couldn't afford. So, is this some sort of American standard? No matter the space you get, you pay rent equally? Am I the asshole for refusing to move in with them? And after I said yes, causing them not to be able to afford a new place? Am I the asshole for sending my daughter to school in her pajamas? My seven-year-old daughter, Elsie, has recently started to make mornings more difficult by throwing a fit when we ask her to get dressed for school. We've tried setting her clothes out the night before, but she still makes an issue out of it, and she doesn't want to sleep in her clothes, so that's not an option either. My wife leaves for work before me, so I'm normally the one who has to deal with the tantrums in the morning. I woke Elsie up, and as always, she refused to get dressed. I wasn't really in the mood to deal with her bullshit, and I didn't have the energy to fight with her about it, so I told her that it was okay and I'll just take her to school in her pajamas. She looked pretty shocked because I don't think it was the outcome she was expecting, but the rest of the morning went a lot smoother than normal. We got in the car and she was more quiet than usual, so I could tell she wasn't really sure what to think of it. But after driving a while, I guess the realization set in and she told me she wanted to go back home and change. I told her she had already made her decision and I wasn't driving her back home now. She started freaking out, saying she wanted me to drive her back home and she didn't want to go to school in her pajamas but I wasn't turning the car around. So we arrived at school and she eventually went in. After my wife came home from collecting her from school, she looked pissed. She didn't say anything in front of Elsie, but later in the evening, as expected, she went off on me. She started saying that I had embarrassed her and made us look like bad parents who can't be bothered to dress our daughter. I told her that I'm sure Elsie isn't the first child to go to school in pajamas and it's not the end of the world. And she wears normal clothes every other day, so one day in pajamas isn't going to make everyone think we're bad parents. She told me she thought it was a cruel thing to do to Elsie, but in my opinion, it was harmless and taught her a lesson. How old is this daughter? Did they? Seven years old. Seven years old. Which I, is like, what, second grade? Yeah. I, I, I don't think I, I'm putting myself in the shoes of like a teacher or something. I don't think I would think. It depends on what these pajamas are. I feel like a lot of pajamas look like regular clothes of just pajama pants and a t shirt. That would look normal. What I am flagging, though, is I don't like that he took it into his own hands of like, well, this is how I'm going to parent our child. Yeah. And it's like different. And the way he's talking about his wife, there's this thing of like, oh, of course, she went off on me. And I think this was right. And she disagrees. And I'm like, you're putting this out there for a bunch of people on the Internet, as opposed to talking to your wife about how you solve this dilemma together. It just feels like communication could have been had. Absolutely. A little bit. It's definitely giving that like exacerbated undertone. Like, yeah. it's kind of like scoffing at her like you know she's overreacting again i think she's justified in being mad at him for doing this and not telling her yeah, I think there was like a better way to go about this too. One, he could have been receptive to the feedback. Like, I get it. You know, I think this was a good lesson for Elsie to learn, but I hear you next time. I'll do something else. But I think even in the moment, she's seven. She's trying to push boundaries. She's trying to determine her own autonomy or, you know, what little a seven-year-old does have. And so as a parent, you could have maybe thought ahead a couple of steps and been like, you know, we're probably going to get to school. She's not going to want the pajamas. Let me grab a pair of pants and a sweatshirt and just bring it in the car in case she does change her mind. Because I think when you get to the point of you're at school and she realized that you called her on her bluff, she's going to realize that the boundary is there. Like, yeah. you know, she kind of learns at that point, like, I've 
I fucked up. Especially if you do that, she learns that you're playing 4D chess that she can't compete with. Exactly. And it's like, oh my God, do I have an original thought? You're yeah. thinking of what I'm thinking of before I yeah. think it? It would ruin her in a in a way that I, as a parent, <laughs> uh, might be good. If I had a seven-year-old who was doing this as well, yep. I'd probably cave in, I feel like. I'd, so, I'd turn the car around. Yeah. I would. I probably would too. I'd, I, I'd hate embarrassing someone. Yeah. And I also remember what it was like being in elementary school oh and my just God. knowing you're going to be judged. Kids bully for way less. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's terrible. Especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. Kids, now that they have access to the Internet. Oh, my gosh. Their insults are devastating. I lost my boyfriend's dog and I don't know how to tell him. Am I an awful person for this? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me an Instagram. Please give this girl some legit advice. She is suffering right now. My boyfriend and I have been together for three months. It's a really new relationship. It's my first serious relationship. So far, I've done everything in my power to impress him in any way I can, including becoming the mother of his dog. Just moved out of his parents' house and he adopted this beautiful dog from a shelter. The puppy is rambunctious, though. He will go crazy at anything. He gets super excited and likes to run around. So my boyfriend asked me if I could walk him every day since I work from home. We worked out a schedule. I'll sleep over at his house three days a week. When he goes off in the morning to work, I walk him once. Then I get on my laptop and work. Then at my lunch break, I'll take him out to walk again. And right before my boyfriend comes home, I'll take him out a third time. My boyfriend is really tired after he comes home. So the last thing I want him to do is be responsible for taking the puppy out. So last week, I took out the damn dog. It has been the bane of my existence ever since. I am suffering. I took him on a walk like we usually do. I didn't notice that his harness was not put on properly. This was my bad. But also, he just moves around so much when I'm putting it on him because he's so excited to go out. I took him outside and within two minutes of starting our walk, he literally just ran. I kept calling him and he ran. I chased him and he ran even more because he thought we were playing a game. You guys have no idea how much I was suffering. I was literally on my knees begging him to come back crying my eyeballs out. That's when I pulled out my phone and lied to my boyfriend. I told him that he must have escaped through the dog flap. For an entire week, this dog was missing. His family and him were suffering. They even put out a $20,000 reward. But thankfully, we found him a week later when a neighbor called and said they spotted him. And after six hours of driving around looking for him we finally found him thank god he is totally safe now i want to tell my boyfriend the truth and i realize i lied to him i feel like i can't retract on what i said did i tell him the truth or should i just let this go i feel like a terrible girlfriend help me please i think my husband is trying to steal my house story time i've been married to my husband steve for five years now the house where we lived was a gift from my parents to me before I even met Steve. So later on in our relationship, when we decided to move in together, he sold his one bedroom flat and he used this to pay off all of his debt that he had. And there was a lot. So there was nothing left after he sold the house. So before we married, I made him sign a prenup, which basically means that he recognizes that the house is a gift from my parents, which he has no claim to. And I also signed one saying that if he ever bought a house, I would have no claim to that. My house is beautiful. It is not old, it is not broken, it is happy and beautiful but for some reason steve has been pushing me to renovate so he wants to put a mortgage on the house to pay for the renovation but by doing this that would mean that his name would go on the mortgage and that will also mean that he goes on the deed to the house not sure how i feel about this steve is now putting so much pressure on me to do these patients when my parents and i bought the house it was worth 440k just had it valued and it's now sitting at just over a million so if steve gets his name on the deed he automatically gets like over 500k so now i'm really concerned that if we get a divorce for whatever reason he's just gonna get half of this gift from my parents and we don't have kids, so it's all going to Steve. So from one side, I've got Steve putting pressure on me to be part owner of the house. And on the other side, I have my family pressuring me not to do this. What do I do? I found out that my birth parents are married to each other and I have full siblings. I was adopted at three months old. I had a dysfunctional family growing up, but I was cared for and loved. Both of my adopted parents passed away in separate car accidents. My dad when I was 17 and my mom three years ago when I was 24. I had a semi-open adoption, but my birth parents requested my adoptive parents stop sending them photos and updates about me when I was less than a year old. I had a vague idea of who my birth parents were. I grew up knowing their names and I had several photos of them. I did a DNA test and was matched with three full siblings, which shocked me. I was always told they were young and that they barely knew each other and wanted to further their education. About three months ago, I decided to Google their names and I found their social media. Turns out they are married to each other now. I stalked them on Facebook a bit and it seems like they have a relatively happy life. I ended up reaching out to my birth mother via Facebook, telling her that I would love to get to know her and that I've had a great life and that I have no expectations. She took a month to respond and when she did, she said she was surprised that I had reached out and to please not contact any siblings as they aren't aware of my existence. 
I didn't respond for a few days, but I ended up just asking her why she chose to give me up and why she never told anyone about me. She responded and said that I was a NICU baby. She and my birth father were 17 when I was born and they weren't prepared to raise a disabled child. She said at the time that they were under the impression that I would never live independently and that they weren't in a place to have a special needs child. Oh my goodness. That is, they were, oh, whoa. Damn, they literally said, let's just get rid of this one and try again. <gasps> the ableism. I was again shocked. I definitely was in the lower percentiles for growth until puberty. But according to my grandmother, by the time I was eight months old, I was hitting all of the markers for regular mental development. I have a master's in mathematics from a tier one university. I was an athlete in high school and I never had any issues in school beyond being really horrible in art class. I'm married with a child. I'm a fully functioning adult with a successful career and a family of my own. And it hurts to know I was given up on because of the slight chance I wouldn't turn out perfect. Part of me feels like I missed out on a life with siblings. I was raised as an only child and that I could still have a chance to know them and love them and that my daughter would have a chance to have cousins. My youngest siblings aren't even in elementary school yet and I could have a normal sibling bond with them or at least be part of their lives from a young age and I wish that I had that chance. I am not angry at my birth parents for giving me away. I don't hate them. I am hurt but I'm not angry. I am angry that they've requested I not reach out to my adult siblings and I'm considering doing it anyway. Am I the asshole for leaving a date early because she didn't tell me she was pregnant? Oh. For context, we had been talking for about two weeks. We met for dinner, and when she showed up, she was about six months pregnant. I asked, and she said she didn't think it was worth mentioning. I said I wasn't interested in having kids or raising someone else's child. I paid for my drink, and then I left. Edit to answer a few questions I'm seeing. My profile said I don't want kids. Hers said open to kids, but didn't say anything about having a kid slash being pregnant. Both of our dating intentions was set to long term. This happened on Sunday, but... I got a text from her on Monday that said I had been really rude by leaving early, so I thought I would get others' opinions. Oh, queen. She should have she should have told them. Oh my god. Especially with the this is these are dating apps that have preferences on it. He says not wanting kids. Yeah. You it's too late. Oh my god, and it's there's, too late there's for no you. hiding it, girl. There's no hiding it. Does she think a first date he's gonna look at her and change his mind? Not on a first date. I am blown away by like the confidence, the, the confidence, the audacity. I don't even know the, the delusion maybe to show up six months pregnant not telling someone. It's a bold move it's and here's strategy. she is listen she deserves love absolutely she, de she deserves a partner who is going to help raise that child but take some context clues before you go on in the date and see oh this guy doesn't want kids maybe i'm not going to be the one for him you can't blind somebody like that and also i actually really think he did the right move by leaving i think that's actually the most respect he could have for her i yeah. think he's saying i respect both of our time too much to waste it here yes. on a date that this is clearly not going to work out. It, it would be so much better than having a, a, a full date and then maybe expecting something else to come from it and then hearing like he's he's cutting it off as soon as he knows it's not right. And a lot of people don't do that. No, and I, I think he's so entitled to doing that because your whole relationship then is started on a lie. Like right. there's no honesty. How do you trust this person going forward if they didn't share such a key detail about themselves before your first date? Key a detail, key detail, a big one. A big one. One that's impossible, in fact, to ignore, perhaps. Yeah, well, and if you continue this relationship three months from now, your dynamic totally changes. Only three. Are, and, that, and you're in a relationship for three months, and now yeah. you are kind of co-parenting. Maybe you're not expected to, but like... It's a different dynamic, for sure. The woman has a newborn. Yeah. Where do you, where do you go from there? Story time about how my lying, cheating husband moved his mistress into our home. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My husband is a classic narcissist. He's a total love bomber, lies, and gaslights. We met through some friends at a party, and the day that we met, he totally love bombed me. He told me I was the most beautiful girl he'd ever seen, that he wanted to marry me, and that we should have kids. Unfortunately, I believed everything he said. On our second day, he told me that he loved me. And when I didn't tell him that I loved him back, he got really upset and told me that we shouldn't see each other anymore. 
A few weeks passed, but I couldn't stop thinking about him, so I reached out. Worst mistake of my life. At the time, I didn't realize how wealthy he was, but boy, did he start letting me know. He would flaunt that he was super rich and even invited me on a trip, which he paid for. We ended up going to the Bahamas and it was magical. Of course, I started falling in love with him. The last day of the trip, he actually asked me to marry him and I said yes. My whole family thought it was absolutely crazy of me because I only knew him for about two weeks. When we got back home, I moved into his beautiful house. You see, I was in a really bad situation. I had a part-time job, no savings, and basically no future. At least that's what he said. So when I moved in, he insisted that I quit my job and basically tend to the house, which I did. So I had no money of my own. This was around the time that he would start gaslighting me. Whenever we got into fights, he would call me names and just threaten me. And when I would bring it up later on, he would totally deny that he ever said anything like that. When we started planning the wedding, things calmed down. He was always at work and I was always at home. We finally got married and went on our honeymoon to Italy. And that's when he started changing even more. He would shame me whenever I tried to post a cute picture of myself on Instagram. And he basically convinced me that I was trying to get attention from other guys. So I stopped posting. Our third night in Italy, he got drunk and we got into a really big fight. I decided to leave the hotel, but when I came back a few hours later, he had a random girl in his room and told me to leave. I couldn't believe his behavior. After about 20 minutes, he let me back into the room and told the girl to leave. That's when I told him I was going to go back home and that I made a huge mistake by marrying him. He apologized and started crying. He said nothing happened to her and part of me just wanted to believe him so desperately, so I did. When we got back home, he was on his best behavior. Until one day, he told me he wanted to hire a live-in cleaning lady. Little did I know it was his mistress. Part 2 is up. Part two of how my husband moved his mistress into our home. Disclaimers is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My narcissist of a husband told me he wanted to hire a cleaning lady. A live-in cleaning lady. A few days later, he shows up with this woman who clearly did not look like a cleaning lady. When I told him I did not want her living in our home, he told me that I had to do what he said because he was the breadwinner. Mind you, he told me to quit my job, so I did. That's when he told me that somebody needed to clean the house, cook for him, and basically take care of him. In other words, I wasn't doing that. Which isn't true because I made him dinners every single day and cleaned the entire house. I told him I knew she wasn't a cleaning lady and that he needed to kick her out. He got really angry and slammed the door. A few minutes later, I hear him coming up the stairs with her. He shows her to the guest room and tells her to settle in. Then he came back into the room, told me that I had to deal with it and that this is how things were going to be from now on. By the way, this girl is Russian and my husband told me that she did not speak English. So basically, I had no way to communicate with her. But my husband did speak Russian, isn't that convenient? So, every single day, this girl would pretend to wash dishes, pretend to clean his clothes, pretend to make the bed. Oh yeah, and she would only wash his dishes, not mine. The situation was way too much for me, so I told my husband I was going to go stay with my sister. That's when he threatened me and told me that if I left, I might not be able to come back. So, of course, I packed my things and went straight to my sister's house. The very next day, my husband shows up to my sister's house with divorce papers. He told me I needed to sign them because he fell in love with the cleaning lady. I told him I wouldn't sign them and he left. Then my sister called the police and told them that my husband had a woman captive in his house and that she was probably in the country illegally. And guess what, y'all? She was. The cops actually took her from the house and now he's asking me to move back in. He took the whole divorce back and wants to take me on a trip. My sister thinks I should get back with him just to make his life miserable. The problem is I have no money of my own. And to be honest, part of me still loves him. I really need some advice and perspective from someone who's not me. My sister's husband severely injured their newborn baby and I'm the only one who can't forgive him. My sister's husband and my sister have been married for seven years. They have one child that is three and another that is nine months. Myself and my partner and my child, four-year-old, have been very close with them up until this incident. About six months ago, I got a frantic call from my sister that the baby had a broken arm and was in the hospital. This happened when my sister was otherwise occupied with her older child under the watch of the brother-in-law. His story at the time was that the baby had his arm wrapped in a blanket wrong and he lifted him up too quickly, snapping his arm just below the shoulder. Ugh. Ugh. I told my sister that sounded wrong and she should press him to tell the truth. I assumed at the time that my brother-in-law was panicking and covering up for dropping him or something like that. The next day, everyone found out everything due to findings on the x-rays and CT scans. My father called me because my sister couldn't speak. I vomited and was filled with rage I have never felt before in my life. There were three broken bones. The arm being the most recent, a rib, and his leg. This man was hitting, squeezing, <laughs> This man was hitting, squeezing, and shaking this tiny helpless baby and hiding it successfully until he couldn't anymore. Obviously, the authorities got involved and cleared my sister of any wrongdoing. Apparently, the first injuries went unnoticed because of the baby's lack of mobility and any discomfort from them would have been minimal and was just seen as normal baby fussing. I believe my sister didn't know until the arm broke. 
Her initial response was normal. She was angry, heartbroken, and in complete shock. This brings us to now. The baby has healed completely and is thriving. The authorities have delivered justice in the form of parole and therapy. No jail time at all. Everyone except me and my partner have seemed to move on from their anger and outrage. The piece of shit brother-in-law gets CPS supervised visitation with the kids and my sister has been seeing him on her own. They go on dates and she is taking him to a family wedding this summer. She told me she is not seeking a divorce and she understands that he has mental issues and this is the reason for what he did. Oh gosh. I'm disgusted. I'm judging her and him very harshly. I physically shake with anger when I hear his name even mentioned. I don't care that he was stressed, overwhelmed, and depressed. While I relate to those feelings as most parents probably do, I cannot forgive him for his actions. He could have put him in the crib and walked away. He could have sought counseling when his feelings started to become unmanageable. He could have done anything else but what he did. Three separate known times. Who knows what didn't leave a mark for the x-rays to see. I will not be attending the wedding this summer and I told my sister explicitly that no one from my household will ever be in his presence again. I help her with babysitting and our kids have play dates, but I have otherwise checked out on her emotionally. I don't want to talk to her about what's going on with her and how she is feeling and I'm sure she has felt me pull away. I feel guilty, angry, and defeated for this. I love my sister and my niece and nephew and I did at one point accept my brother-in-law as a brother. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. How and when do you forgive someone for something like this? I don't think I can. Oh my shit. Oh gosh. Oh, there's like, there's so much to digest on this, but I just want to get one point across. As a parent, your first and fourth most responsibility is to protect that helpless child. And for you to put yourself in a situation where there's even a slim chance of something like that happening again is wrong. Like that poor baby. I just cannot imagine the pain that that baby had to go through at such a young age and for you to even let him get his mental help let that happen but you don't need to expose your children to that let's make sure that he's a hundred percent okay to be in the same vicinity as them but I, I don't you gotta protect your babies Am I the asshole for not eating food my girlfriend's parents made at family dinner? My girlfriend of four years has a different cultural background than mine. Her parents are not from America and family and meals are very important to them. I grew up in America and while we had holiday dinners and maybe a Sunday dinner every couple of weeks, for the most part, mom or dad made something and then we eat it where and when we wanted. I eat dinner with my girlfriend's parents every week and I love it. It is important to her and I have no problem with the different cuisines. It's all delicious food. However, I do not eat a lot. Growing up, I was very overweight and saw a nutritionist, stuck to a calorie deficit and worked on my portions, and have been at a healthy weight ever since. My relationship with food has changed, and I no longer have the desire to tear through two double quarter pounders anymore. My girlfriend's parents seem to get offended that I get small portions of things and don't fill my plate up a second time. They will make maybe five to six different food options, and I'll get a little bit of everything because I want to taste it all. At some point, every time I'm there, they ask me if I didn't like the food. They mention the small portions and how I never go back for I just honestly tell them I don't want to overeat. They never made a scene about it to me, but I guess they've been discussing it with my girlfriend while I am not there. A couple of days ago, my girlfriend told me that her parents feel offended over how little I eat, which a little is a 100% full plate with a bit of everything made. And some days I eat less and some days I eat more. It really just depends. If I skipped breakfast and had a light lunch, I might fill up more for dinner. But if, for example, I had a decent breakfast, work catered sandwiches that day, I'm going to get a normal, small, size dinner. My general goal is to have equal sized meals each time, but with a busy work life that is not always possible. So some days I didn't really have food until family dinner and I'm eating more than usual. My girlfriend asked me if it were possible that I could eat a little bit more just for one day of the week. She didn't push her demand, just asking if it was possible. I told her that I don't want to ruin my mended relationship with food. I don't understand why the parents are so offended. I always pack up Tupperware and eat it throughout the week because it's delicious food. I don't want to disrespect her parents though. Am I the asshole for pouring my drink on someone who threw hers in my face first? I went out clubbing last night with my friends. There were seven of us, three guys including me and four girls. My girlfriend Hannah was meant to come too but she was feeling ill. I offered to stay in with her but she insisted I go out and have a good time. At the club, my friends got talking to a group of women who apparently worked in finance. They were here for some kind of conference and were checking out the local places in their spare time. One of them, Lauren, started trying to chat to me and asked for my number. She was pretty, but I was not interested as I have a girlfriend. I told her this, but she then started asking for pics of Hannah. I showed her and she said that I could do so much better than that. I was very annoyed and told her to leave me alone. 
Later on, me and my friends were dancing, and Lauren and her group came up to us, and she started trying to dance with me. I gave her the brush off once again and moved away from her, and she gave me a dirty look. A while later, she came back, and by that point, she was very drunk. She smirked at me and threw her drink in my face. I was absolutely fuming, and in response, I poured my beer on her head. She started crying and ran to the bouncer who got us all kicked out. Everyone then proceeded to have it go at me. I understand that they were annoyed that we got kicked out, but everyone was acting like I was wrong to pour my drink on her. They all saw her splash her drink in my face, but everyone was saying it was nasty to do that to a girl. The ladies in our group were talking about how upset they'd be if someone ruined their dress, hair, makeup by doing that. But when I pointed out she did the same to me, everyone said it wasn't the same. Nobody said goodbye to me last night, and I made my own way home. I told Hannah what happened, and she agrees that I didn't do anything wrong. I tried to explain myself again over the group chat, but everyone has ignored me. How do I sort this out in a mature way? Would I be the asshole by not telling a guy I've been dating for a month that I'm having artificial insemination to be a single mother? Prior to lockdown, I decided to be a single mother by choice. The journey to accepting this has taken two years and included counseling and a very thorough plan to ensure I could do this alone. Right before I was due to have artificial insemination with the donor sperm, the pandemic hit and treatments were canceled. There was no timeline for when things may reopen. For a few days, I was devastated as I was so mentally prepared for this. And then I picked myself up and decided to park my plan. After all, I didn't have a choice. I downloaded a dating app out of curiosity and figured that I could still chat to guys and see what happened without having any expectation. I've been talking with this guy, let's call him G, and it's only been a month, so very early stage. However, we've met up twice and spoken many times on the phone. And I get a really good feeling from him. For the first time in years, quite frankly, I feel emotionally connected with the man and it feels completely natural and promising. During this time, my clinic called me to say they have an approval to open and do I wish to go ahead this month with my treatment. I want to be a mother more than ever, so I said yes, and now I'm on medication with my appointment set for next week. While there's no guarantee I'll get pregnant on the first go, I have a conflict in mind about informing G of my plan. On one hand, it's at such an early stage of our romance without yet being anything committed that I feel like I'm bringing something up prematurely. On the other hand, I wonder what may happen as time goes on. Am I just delaying the inevitable? Is it deceptive of me not to inform him of something so fundamental in my life? A friend told me that I'd sabotage a potential relationship with him by telling him of this plan right now, and that a man who is really into me will accept me even if I'm pregnant, and that more time is needed for him to really get to know me. But in my mind, I'm wondering if it will piss him off by suddenly saying, hey, I'm pregnant by the way. I've spoken loosely about wanting kids in the future, so I know he'd like a family, but it was a brief passing comment. I'm also not willing to wait to get into a long-term relationship, and we are far too early into be thinking about a family together. Y'all may know some fake-ass friends, but wait till you hear this story chime. So, one of my best friends had a roommate. Now, this roommate wasn't just some random chick. She knew this girl a few years back. So, her and her roommate were really close friends. I even met her roommate, and I liked her. She was super sweet. So I thought. Anyways, two months back, she was looking through her bank statement and she realized that she had some unexplained charges. So I don't remember who exactly she talked to, but they were able to see that some of the charges were from Apple Pay. And my best friend has never used Apple Pay, ever. Then come to find out, it was linked to her roommate's Apple Pay. So basically her roommate went through her purse, took out her wallet, grabbed her credit card, and took down her information for her Apple Pay. And I felt so bad for my friend because she literally took this girl in when she had nowhere to live, gave her a freaking bed, did so much for this girl just for her to stab her in the back. So when my friend found out her roommate was stealing from her, she didn't know what she should do because her roommate isn't a US citizen. So my best friend came crying to me along with her other friend. She didn't know if she should go to the cops or not because her roommate is not a US citizen. She's actually from Thailand. But I told my best friend that she should go to the cops and she shouldn't feel bad about it. Because it wasn't like her roommate felt any type of remorse when she got herself a personal trainer or when she went on a shopping spree or when she would go out to eat with my friend and pay with her Apple Pay using my friend's money. It honestly hurts me to see other people take advantage of my friend's kindness. So I told her that her roommate deserves everything that comes to her. So my friend made a police report and I don't know why but they said it was going to take about a month. So that meant my friend had to keep quiet and live with her roommate still for a month before anything could get done about it. So my friend then got a new credit card that came in the mail. The day that the credit card came in the mail, the roommate actually checked the mail that day. And when she handed my friend her mail, there were small tears on the side like the roommate was trying to look at the mail. So my friend had her new credit card that came in the mail and her stupid ass, dumbass roommate decided to try to look into it. She tried to get into it. My friend saw the tears on the envelope. You ain't slick. But my friend still had to activate the credit card, so it's not like it did any. Anyways, after she's done with that, she puts her credit card into her wallet. And then she put her wallet into her purse. She left her purse on her bed while she went to go take a shower. And the way that she has her place set up, you can see her bed from her bathroom. 
right before my friend went into the shower she forgot her towel so she had to come out of her bathroom and grab a towel when she came out she noticed that the lights were on which was weird because the lights were off when they were watching the movie and my friend left in the middle of the movie anyways when my friend went back into the bathroom she kept the door cracked so she could look through it so my friend grabbed her towel and she went to the bathroom she kept the door cracked so she could peep through it y'all won't believe what she saw her roommate doing so if y'all remember i said her purse was sitting on her bed she saw her roommate go through her purse take out her wallet and grab her credit card so at this point my friend is just done with this shit. so she gave the officer a call and he told her to wait for him outside keep in mind the roommate was still in the house okay the officer gets there and he goes in and he talks to the roommate while my friend waits outside in her car we don't exactly know what the officer said to this chick all we know is he scared the crap out of her because she confessed to stealing almost a thousand dollars from my friend she also stole twenty dollars from one of our other friends that came over a necklace and so much more officer comes out asks my friend if she wants to press charges she says yes officer leaves and she's waiting in her car the roommate then starts blowing up my friend's phone making part five right now so the officer leaves and my friend's obviously still in her car the roommate starts texting my friend blowing up her phone i'm sorry i didn't mean it blah 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 like no honey you had many chances to redeem yourself like as you were going into her purse grabbing her wallet and taking her credit card did you not feel some sort of guilt did you just think what you were doing was right no you didn't and the fact that you even stole more things no nah, you just mad you got caught but yeah, my friend texts her back and she said, listen, I can't forgive you and what you did wasn't right. So the roommate texts her and says, I'm leaving. So she left and then my friend went back into her place. Then coronavirus hit and they can't do anything right now. So if you think about it, her roommate kind of got lucky. I just hope she's not out here stealing from someone else. God, please watch over that girl. Y'all, just keep your eyes open for people. Because you may know someone for years and you think you could trust them, but in reality, they're just screwing you over. Story time about how I'm in love with my sister's boyfriend and I think he likes me too. Actually, no. I know so because he kissed me three days ago. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. The story I'm about to tell you guys is pretty bad, so please don't comment me in the comments. I swear I'm a good girl. A little backstory, my sister and I have never really gotten along. She's three years older than me and thinks she's the queen of the house. And she's always seen me as competition, which I hate. My mom would always try to make us get along, but it was totally impossible. My sister was always upset at something I did. Eventually, I stopped trying with my sister and I wouldn't make any effort to make her like me. Finally, last year she moved out and I was so happy. We celebrated my 20th birthday at home last year, and of course my sister came over, but she brought this really cute boy with her. Let me tell you guys, it was instant love at first sight. I can't even explain what I felt, I just knew that I liked him. Even my mom made a comment about how good looking he was. And can I just say that I caught him staring at me a few times throughout the dinner. After that, I never really saw him because my sister and I never hung out. Until my sister lost her job because of COVID and had to move back in with us. And this meant that I was seeing her boyfriend a lot more around our house. He was so nice to me. Anytime they wanted to watch a movie, he would always invite me. If they were going to go out to eat or go to the beach, he would always invite me. Eventually, I started saying yes, well, because I liked him. And something told me that he liked me too. And yes, I know it's totally wrong, but I just couldn't help myself. Whenever I knew he was going to come over, I would dress up and look really cute. I also had a pool in the backyard, so I would make sure I was in a bikini whenever he came over. I know this sounds bad, but it's gonna get worse. Well, guess what? Around this time, my sister actually got COVID. Thankfully, she didn't get really sick, but she was a little bit under the weather. And of course, she had to quarantine. So she basically stayed in her room and we all were on the other side of the house. Of course, her boyfriend, let's call him Mark. Mark would come over and bring her food sometimes. On one of these occasions, he asked me if I wanted to go to the beach with him and his friends the following day. He knew that I was totally bored because of quarantine, so I said yes. And guess what? He didn't tell my sister that he asked me and I didn't tell her that I said yes. So it was our little secret. The following day, I wore my sexiest bikini and we had a great time at the beach with his friends. While we were at the beach with his friends, I could tell that he kept staring at me. And he caught me staring at him too a couple of times. When we drove back to our house, he made a comment about how good I looked in the bikini. That's when I told him that he looked really good too. From then on, we started flirting all the time, making little comments, staring at each other. And he also started following me on Instagram. So I got to work posting sexy stories all the time. And it totally worked because he would reply to them. That's when I sent him a naughty picture. Part 2 is up. Part 2 of how I'm in love with my sister's boyfriend and he likes me too because he kissed me. Clamor, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. So after flirting back and forth through DM, I finally sent him a cute naughty picture. I mean, not so naughty, but a little naughty. And that's when he sent me one back. Then he sent me a text message saying that he wished he had met me before he met my sister. And I told him I felt the exact same way. The following day, he came to visit my sister like he usually did. My sister had COVID at the time, so he would come every single day. At this point, my sister's quarantine was almost over. So I knew I either had to act fast or talk to him and 
tell him that we couldn't take things further. My parents had decided to go to our lake house, so I knew I had the house all to myself. And my sister couldn't come out of her room, so he and I were basically alone in the house. That's when he asked me if we could talk. We went to the backyard so that my sister wouldn't hear us, and he confessed that he really liked me, but he didn't know how to feel about it. He also told me he felt really guilty, and I totally understood him. He asked me what I thought we should do, and I just didn't have an answer. We just stared at each other for a second, and then he kissed me. And it was the most magical kiss of my entire life. We then proceeded to make out for about 10 minutes. After that, he told me we needed to make a decision. I told him the best thing for us to do was to just be honest with my sister. We went straight to my sister's room and told her everything. Of course, my sister being the drama queen that she is, she started throwing things around in her room and she called my parents and told them everything. Mark got on the phone with my parents and told them that he was responsible for everything, but that he couldn't lie to my sister and that he had to be honest. And yeah, I fell even harder when he said that. That's when my sister had the bright idea to lie and say that she was pregnant and that he had to get married with her. Mark hesitated but said if that was true, then yes, they would get married. I told my sister I didn't believe her and that she needed to provide a pregnancy test. Mark went and got the pregnancy test and of course it came back negative. Mark went home and I got on the phone with my parents and I told him that I would step aside for my sister's happiness. My parents told me that they thought it was the best thing. So I called Mark and told him that he needed to stay with my sister. Now my sister is trash talking me to all her friends, which I expected and I guess I deserve. But should I sacrifice my happiness and his? My sister won't let Mark and I talk at all. When he comes over, I completely ignore him. What should I do, you guys? Help. Am I the asshole for returning a birthday gift I got from my boyfriend after he insulted me about my colorful past? This happened last night, but my phone is still blowing up. I, female 26, dipped into my savings and got Mike, my boyfriend, 27, a PS5 for his birthday yesterday. He knew he was getting the PS5 because he told me that the PS5 is the only thing he wants. We've been together for four years, so the cost didn't matter. That is until I found out what he thinks of me. Some background. When I was 18, I was involved with Jake, a guy who I met online. We ended things after three months and I moved on shortly after with Adam, a guy from work. I found out a couple of months later that Jake and Adam were actually really close friends, but I didn't know Jake long enough to meet his friend group, so I had no idea. After finding out, I took some time off dating and two years later, I met my current boyfriend, Mike. I was upfront and honest with Mike about my past and the fact that I was unintentionally involved with friends. He said he understood and my past didn't bother him. Last night at his party, I showed up with the PS5 and him and his friends were screaming with joy. His best female friend, Jessica, laughed and said, quote, I wish I was a thought so I could afford a PS5 too. I looked at her with a excuse me look on my face and she just said, never mind and walked away. <laughs> Jessica, what's Bitch. the beef? I confronted my boyfriend about it and he said, and I quote, she's just messing with you. You can't take a joke. So I pushed further as to why this girl is even calling me names to begin with. And he said, quote, well, everyone knows you were a thought before you met me. <laughs> I asked him to explain how I was a thought before him, and he said, quote, you know, messing with best friends. He then patted me on the shoulder and said, it's okay, because I'm not who I was back then, and if he could get over my, quote, colorful past and thought mentalities to give me a chance, then I could get over Jessica's comments and give her another chance. I didn't say anything. I just got up, took the PS5 from the gift table, and left. He was pissed. He literally called me 20 times, but I didn't care. It was so hurt that I took the bow off and took it straight back to the store I got it from. They happily refunded it. I thought that was done, but Mike and all of his friends, including Jessica, are berating me for being petty. And they're all saying I brought this on myself by making poor choices. I responded to Mike and told him that he deserves better than me. So find someone who wasn't a thought and get the PS5 from them because I returned it. He started screaming how I'm the biggest asshole for returning it and how I should be happy he ignored my color past. I'm thinking maybe taking it back was too far. <laughs> Am I the asshole? I'm going to vomit. You hooked up with two people two. who knew each other and you're a thought. If that makes you a thought, if these people, if this group of friends and Miss Jessica knew me in college, I, they'd be putting me on a cross. I'm somewhere. going to hell. Am I wrong for stopping my cousin's marriage proposal? I, 27 female, just got married to the love of my life, Jacob, 30 male, this past weekend. My cousin Patrick, 34 male, has always been immature, selfish, and rudely forthright. For as long as I can remember, he has never failed to make birthday parties, not his own, holidays, and other occasions all about him. The adults in the family have always shown him favoritism, and this has over time spoiled and enabled him. 
A week before the wedding, he called to let me know that he was going to propose to his longtime girlfriend during the reception. This infuriated me, as it should, but I calmly asked him not to go through with it. When he asked why, I said that I did not want attention to be deviated away from me and my husband on our special day. This did not go over well, and soon after he began yelling at me. He even went as far as calling me a selfish b and then hung up on me. Can I just say, I will always say this, proposals at other people's wedding lacks effort and is very tacky. You couldn't think of an, uh, so many hundreds of other ways to propose to someone besides someone else's wedding. <laughs> Later that day, I received multiple angry phone calls from our parents saying that I was being selfish and unreasonable. I explained to them that at the end of the day, it was my wedding day and that it was my decision if I wanted the proposal to take place. This angered many, with some family members going as far as deciding not to attend. Ew! Disgusting! What is up with your family's, like, dynamic? Why are they all okay or pro him proposing at your wedding? I would be like, hell to the no, what do you think? What do you think this is? I assumed that Patrick was going to make a no-show, but to my surprise, he texted me saying that he'd show up anyway. I knew that he was going to go against my wishes and carry on with the proposal. So, I concocted a plan and showed a picture of Patrick to the live band that I hired for the reception. I even paid them extra with the request to start playing should Patrick ever try to make a speech. The day was finally here and Patrick arrived with his girlfriend and his parents. He was acting very cordial for once, but I was not fooled. After the maid of honor and best man speeches, I noticed Patrick getting up from his seat and making his way towards the stage. And just like that, the band started to play. I smiled, grabbed my husband, and rushed to the dance floor. Everyone else joined in, and it looked as though Patrick's actions went unnoticed. He made three more attempts, which were shut down immediately with loud music. Some of the cousins even blocked his path, telling him to just cut it out. He looked more and more angry as the night progressed, and eventually grabbed his girlfriend's hand and stormed out of the venue. As I watched him leave, I laughed out loud and had a blast for the rest of the night with my family and friends. I woke up the next morning to more angry text messages and voicemails which I ignored. I decided not to engage in the drama and just enjoy my honeymoon with my husband. So, am I the asshole? This is why you should never date multiple people at once. A story time, I guess. This story takes place when I was 17. Or 16. Okay, no one cares. It was a long time ago. And girl, back in the day, I was getting played. Left, right, and center. Played like a game of football. I had a distinct taste for F-boys. And that was going on for some time. Until your girl said enough. Enough of this buffoonery. I'm not getting played by men any longer. And I am going to become a player myself. I know the logic is really off, but I was 17, so cut me some slack, okay? So my brilliant idea was, I'm just gonna talk to multiple guys, and I will figure out which one I like in the end, and I'm gonna date that one. Now in my mind, the plan was flawless, and they do always say, don't put your eggs in one basket. So I end up meeting a couple of guys, and I really like this one guy, but I decide I'm keeping my options open. Already posted part two, so go watch it. So I was talking to like four guys, and I literally did not like them but i was determined to keep my options open i just didn't want another guy to play me as the time progressed me and this one guy the one i really like started actually like dating i mean we didn't define the relationship but it looked like a relationship in my head you have to like define the relationship and my man's he's not doing that i even met his mom now this is where it gets truly embarrassing so one day i'm getting drinks with one of those other three guys even though i'm basically in in love with this guy and we're sitting in this cafe having a good old time and who walks in through the door the mother of the guy i want to date i should have saw this coming but i was dumb so my heart dropped and she freaking waved at me like mm, i see what you're about and needless to say she told him and me and the one guy I really liked never talked again story of the client i should have said no to as soon as i saw her book an appointment Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. Before I started doing makeup, I had gotten a job waitressing at a local restaurant. And for those of you who have ever worked in the food service industry, you know just how competitive being a waitress can be. I was a really hard worker and just a few months after me working there, I had been promoted to shift manager. This really made some of the other waitresses mad, especially this one girl who I remembered from high school that I knew of, but I didn't really know her. You know what I mean? And that's where the story time really begins. It's important to note that I was in a relationship at the time I started working at the restaurant. Let's just call my boyfriend Devin. 
And when I applied to work there, he had told me that one of his exes used to work there and he wasn't really sure if she still did or not. Knowing this before going into the job, I didn't really make it a point to be friends with any of the other waitresses that worked there. Flash forward, I've graduated cosmetology school. Devin and I are still happily together and we just moved into our first two bedroom apartment where I had turned the second bedroom into a full makeup room and had started doing clients makeup out of our home. I was getting about two to three clients a day on the weekdays and about five or six on the weekends. This included Fridays. One day as I'm going through my appointment books for the next week, I noticed that one of the girls I had worked with at the restaurant prior to becoming a makeup artist had scheduled an appointment for the coming Friday. I thought that was pretty interesting because like I'd said, I never really made it a point to be friends with anyone I had worked with there, and it never really seemed like any of them liked me very much either. On the day of her appointment, she arrives at my apartment 30 minutes early. I was still working on the client before her, so I just had her wait on the couch in my living room. As soon as I finished up with the client before her, I went into the living room and I greeted her promptly. Instead of saying, hi, how are you? How have you been? The first thing she asked me was, how long is this going to take? Because I'm in a hurry. Let me just tell you that all of my clients receive a text notification before coming into their appointment. It includes a short waiver that they all must sign before arriving to their appointment. And it also lets them know that a full service of makeup will take about an hour to an hour and a half. So please schedule your appointment accordingly. I reminded her of this, but instead of acknowledging it, she just very quickly changed the subject. As I'm walking her back to the makeup room, she starts looking around and asking me if I live here alone or if there's someone else in the apartment. That's when I told her that I live here with my boyfriend. It was the same guy I dated when I worked at the restaurant and I asked if she remembered him. She very rudely said, no, I didn't know you had a boyfriend. I'm surprised you could get one and then tried to laugh it off like it was just supposed to be a joke. I was really confused why she was talking to me like this, especially since she was the one who scheduled an appointment with me. About halfway through her makeup, she starts getting on her phone, looking down a lot, and I couldn't really get to her face. I usually try to stay out of people's business, but I couldn't help myself, and I looked down at her phone screen. The name at the top of the text messages said Devin. Instead of saying anything about it, I just started reading the text messages as I was doing her eyeshadow. That's when I realized that this was the ex my boyfriend had warned me about before I started working at the restaurant. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Not only was this crazy bitch in my apartment, my boyfriend was texting her. As I was finishing up her makeup, I just couldn't help myself but to look down at her phone screen. That's when I realized that this was the ex my boyfriend had warned me about when I worked at the same restaurant as her. And not only that, but she was literally texting my boyfriend right in front of my face as I was doing her makeup. Let me just remind you that I do makeup out of my own home. And me and my boyfriend live together, so he was literally in the other room. I didn't really know how to react in this situation, but what I had decided to do was just wait until she left and then talk to him about it. More like kick him out, but you know what I mean. I finished up her makeup as fast as I possibly could because at this point, honestly, I just wanted her out of my apartment and as far away from me as possible. After she paid me and was literally walking out the front door, this girl had the audacity to turn around and say, what did you say your boyfriend's name was? Maybe I do remember him. Thinking that I had absolutely no idea what was going on. Looking back now, I think she may have been texting him in front of me on purpose, like to let me know what was going on. But with the amount of attitude this girl was having, I'm not really sure if she was trying to help me. As soon as she left, I turned around to go talk to Devin. As soon as I reached for the bedroom doorknob, he opened the door from the other side. He was completely dressed and ready to go, and that's when I asked him, where are we going? At this point, I was trying to play it cool, but just hold on a second. He told me that while I was doing my last client's makeup, his friends texted and asked if he wanted to come over and play Xbox. How coincidental that his side piece was literally texting him 10 minutes ago and now he has somewhere to be. I almost just let him walk out the door and packed up his stuff while he was gone. But to be completely honest, I wouldn't have been satisfied with that. Right before he reached to open the front door, I stopped him and asked him who the hell he was just texting because I saw him texting my last client. His face got completely bright red and his eyes got huge and I saw for a split second he was thinking about literally just running away from me. I could literally see the wheels turning in his head about what lie he was about to spew. So I came up with a lie first. I told him while I was doing her makeup, I saw all the text messages of him saying I love you. And then I told him that I already asked the girl about it and she confirmed everything. That's when he completely folded. He thought he had been 100% caught in this lie, so he just went ahead and came clean about everything. He told me that he had been seeing this girl on the side ever since I worked with her at the restaurant and that it was exciting for him to know that he might get caught since we worked together. But after I started doing makeup, he had to find a way to keep it exciting, so he had her call and schedule an appointment with me. I literally couldn't believe what I was hearing because this is the most effed up situation I've ever been in. Before he left to go over to her house, I had him pack up all of his stuff and take it with him. I haven't heard from that girl or Devin ever since that day, and quite honestly, I hope I never do.
Is it okay that my boyfriend insists on me washing myself before any sexy time? My boyfriend and I have been together for six months, but we've broken up four times. Altogether, we've probably only spent about three months together. He pursued me really hard. We met at work and the first day we met, he asked me out. I kept saying no because I really don't want to focus on guys right now. I have a really good career in fashion, so dating was not in my plans. He kept on insisting and doing very nice things for me, like he would bring me my favorite coffee or bring me my favorite foods. I finally said yes when he brought me a basket full of my favorite snacks from Whole Foods. He told me that he basically went around asking everyone what they saw me eating. And then he went to Whole Foods and bought everything and made a basket for me. I was really flattered, so when he asked me out again, I said yes. I thought maybe he'd be a really, really kind and just considerate guy, but things are not like that. We went on a total of five dates before anything happened. When it finally came time to doing it, we were at my apartment and he insisted that I go take a shower. When I asked him why, he said he prefers for everything to be clean. Obviously, I got offended and said, I am clean. He then rolled his eyes and said, okay, never mind. And then we did it. Part two is up. Is it okay that my boyfriend insists that I wash myself before any sexy time? When he told me he wanted me to be clean, I said I am clean, so we proceeded to do it. Everything was pretty normal after that. He was really affectionate and kept complimenting me. A few days later, it was going to be our second time, but before anything starts to happen, he once again asked me to go take a shower. I asked him if I smelt bad or something, and he said, no, I just think that you should take a shower. I decided to keep my cool, and I went and took a shower, but the routine stuck. Every single time we were going to do anything, he would ask me to go take a shower. Now, I wonder what you might be thinking. No, I do not smell bad. I usually take two showers hours a day anyway, one in the morning after working out, and then one at night before getting into bed. So I know I don't smell bad, but now it's a total inconvenience. Every time we want to do it, he asked me to go take a shower, even if I'm dressed, even if I have makeup on. So I started avoiding it at all costs. Anytime he would ask me to do it, I would just say no. Because of this, we actually broke up for two months. When we got back together, it was the same exact thing. Once again, I was taking a shower every single time. Part three is, is it okay that my boyfriend insists on me washing myself before any sexy time? I actually even began associating sexy time with being dirty. Because he would insist so much, I would actually start to feel shame. I knew that I was clean and I washed myself multiple times a day, even when I knew I wasn't going to see him. I decided to reach out to an ex-girlfriend of his on Instagram, and I asked her if she had the same problem with him. And she proceeded to send me paragraphs and paragraphs of all the things that he made her do. Not only would he make her shower before sexy time, but he would make her brush her teeth before kissing and fully removing her makeup too. I told her that my theory was that he must have had a bad experience with some other girl. Then she told me her theory, that he likes being in control, and that the only reason he asked us to do all these things was so that he could feel in control. By the way, her and I are now friends, so here's what I did. The next time I saw my boyfriend, I asked him to take a shower. And guess what? He got totally offended. I pulled him up on the fact that he makes me shower every single time, and he said that I should be happy to do whatever it takes to make him happy. Now I refuse to take a shower whenever he wants me to. And because of that, he's always in a bad mood. He even told my best friend that I wasn't a considerate girlfriend. How dare he complain to her? Now here's the thing, I'm very attracted to him and I feel like I'm falling in love with him, but this is the only thing that's holding me back. He even mentioned moving in together, what should I do? Am I the asshole for telling my 30 female husband, 35 male, that I don't want to sell the house to save his dog? Hmm. Hello, as the title says, my husband adopted a female husky on a whim before we met. He never researched the breed or anything about dogs. He refused to spay her because as he says, she wouldn't be a real husky and would lose her personality, which we all know isn't true. She is now eight years old. Side note, the house our family lives in is his, purchased before me, and he is currently unemployed because he lost his job in June and hasn't received government assistance yet. His credit cards are maxed out right now and he is living off his savings. My salary covers family expenses, but nothing else. In the past year, we've spent a total of 8K of our emergency savings on emergency vet bills for the dog. One, he gave her a bone full of fat, which I told him not to give her, and she was hospitalized for pancreatitis. Two, she had a mammary tumor that was thankfully benign, so surgery to remove the mass. He still wouldn't spay her. Three, she had a phantom pregnancy a few months ago, so another trip to the vet for tests, where I finally convinced him to spay her. Four, the spaying. Five, now, three weeks after the spaying, she has a large mass on another tit. It's very bad and leaking red. Since my husband has no job and no income, his solution to pay for the vet bills, multiple tumor removals, chemotherapy, etc., is to sell his car. I have my own that I use for work every day. And then the house that our children and I live in. Okay. He needs my okay to sell as we are married and it is 
registered as a family residence. He says he refuses to let his dog die over a tumor. He has a very unhealthy attachment to his dog. She basically replaced his dad after his dad's passing mm. eight years ago and says she's the only thing he had after the passing. Oh, at first I was like, okay, and now I'm okay. <laughs> I have animals of my own and I understand not wanting to let them go and doing everything for them. But I think this is excessive and I think everyone needs a limit where they say, I'm not going to put myself in crippling debt and be homeless for this. He obviously thinks I'm an asshole for not being okay with the house and car being sold and thinks I'm even more of an asshole because I financially can't and don't want to put myself in huge amounts of debt for the dog when we are already struggling on one income. So I ask everyone, am I the asshole? My husband wanted to open up our marriage, and now I'm dating his boss, so now he wants to close it. Let me start this by saying I didn't mean to start dating his boss. It all happened accidentally. My husband and I have been married for almost eight years now, and we have always had a healthy marriage and great intimacy life, or so I thought. It came completely out of the blue when my husband sat me down a few months ago and said that he was feeling unsatisfied with our physical connection and he needed something more to be able to be fulfilled. I was so confused. We are intimate a couple of times a week and he never gave any indication he was feeling unhappy in the bedroom. I was feeling hurt before he even dropped the bomb on me that he wanted to open up our marriage. I felt so small and unwanted and he rambled on on wanting to experience more freedom but he assured me that he loved me and he wanted to stay together. I asked him why I wasn't enough for him and if there was anything I could do to make him happier in the bedroom or in our marriage in general. But all he said was that it had more to do with his masculinity than me. It didn't make me feel better, but I love him and we had already been together for so long. So reluctantly, I agreed and we decided to be open from that day on. Right there, that's where you failed the test, right? If you had said, okay, you want to open it up, then we're no, we're no longer married. Guarantee, 90% he would have backed up. He was trying to see where he could draw the line with you. And the fact that you said we have been together for so long, you're scared of like trying to find someone else. They used that against you. <laughs> Our only terms was that we had to disclose to one another when we would start seeing people. The first couple of weeks were excruciating. He immediately started seeing a woman from his office and I would just stay at home and cry myself to sleep while I pictured him out with the younger, more attractive woman. I was devastated for a while and honestly had zero interest in dating anyone other than my husband. But after five months of him dating one girlfriend and spending most nights with her instead of at home with me, I decided that I deserved to experience some freedom as well. I made a Tinder account one night while he was out with his girlfriend and I was surprised when I got over a hundred matches on the very first night. No one was really catching my attention until I matched with this one very handsome older man. He seemed very successful and he was a gorgeous silver fox. I ended up messaging him and we went out a couple of days later. I remembered the feeling of waiting for him at the bar and it felt nice to have romantic butterflies for the first time in almost a decade. The date went amazingly and we went to see each other and eventually slept together. It was one of the most thrilling exotic nights of my life. I hate to say it, but he was a much more talented lover than my husband. And I guess because he was older, he had more experience. Anyways, I told my husband about my boyfriend and he honestly seemed like he didn't believe me. He literally patted me on the head and said, Aw, good for you, honey, before heading out the door to spend the night with his girlfriend. Things got messy in a way I could never have anticipated. I knew the situation was sort of rocky, but now I truly feel like I'm living inside a soap opera. Yesterday, my boyfriend texted me asking if he left a manila folder in my car the last time we saw each other. I found the folder and he asked if I could drop it off at his job. I was off that day and figured they were important work documents, so I gathered the folder and a little snack and he sent me his location so I could come drop it off. You can imagine how stunned I was when I followed the address and it took me to my husband's place of work. I had no idea that he and my husband worked together and all I knew was that he was the head of whatever company he worked for and he held the highest position in his office. He never spoke much about his work and we just liked to relax when we hung out together. Well, I walked into the office feeling awkward about possibly seeing my husband. Well, I walked to my boyfriend's office and he came out to take the folder from me. He thanked me and gave me a little kiss before going back. When I turned around, of course, my husband happened to be walking by at that exact moment. He had obviously seen his boss kiss me and realized he had been my boyfriend all along. His mouth made the perfect O shape and there was hurt creeping into his eyes. I felt sort of embarrassed at that moment even though I had done nothing wrong so I just said hi to my husband and quickly left the office. When my husband finally got home, he broke down in tears and said how I could do this to him. I reminded him that the entire situation was his idea in the first place and that's when my husband said that he was willing to close the marriage if it meant I would stop seeing his boss. 
The thing is, I have real feelings for my boyfriend and I feel like my husband is being controlling and unfair. I find myself doubting my entire marriage and I think I might end up having to choose between the two of them. Terrifying story about me going to get my IUD. So my boyfriend's mom and my friend went and took me to the doctors to get my IUD. And yes, I said my boyfriend's mom because if my parents knew, they would have killed me. So everything's normal. I go in the room, get undressed, sit up on the table, put my legs up on that thing. And next thing I know, eight male student doctors walk in the room and are all looking at my cooch. All of them. So then my doctor walks in and he's like, Kaylee, we're going to have one of my students put in your IUD. Like, oh great, I'm already scared of shit. Thanks. So they open up my cooch. All eight doctors are looking in my fucking vagina inside. And he goes to put it in the first time and i was already scared because i knew that it fucking hurts so it's in everything's good he goes to cut the string and fucking pulls it out i was already in excruciating pain so they let him do it a second time and he does the exact same fucking thing i was about to kick him in the face my dad almost got arrested story time so at that time i was eight years old and little old me was playing with the neighbor's kid which was my dad's friend's son did that make sense Anyways, my parents were watching over the boy I was playing with because his dad was working or something like that. Well, me and this boy, we were playing outside. And the boy asked me, hey, do you want to go over to my house so we could go play some games? And of course I said, yeah, let's go play some games. So we walk over to his house. And of course, when we get there, the door is locked because his dad is gone. But we were little and we weren't thinking. But of course, the story doesn't stop there. The boy said, I have a ball on my balcony. If you hop over, we can go play with the ball. So my dumbass said, Okay, once I hop over, I'll throw the ball to you. So I hop over the fence and grab the ball and throw it to him. Then I hop back over and we go back to my house. Well, apparently, when I jumped over, someone saw and broke in to this boy's house. So eight-year-old me hopped over my friend's fence to grab a ball. Someone saw me do this and broke into my friend's house. However, no one knew that my friend's house got broken into until his dad finally came home. Then he calls my dad and then everything just gets ugly. A little while later, the cops get there. They then question me and my friend. Then after they question me, I go home and I'm chilling with my family. A few minutes later, the cops show up back at my house and they start handcuffing my dad. Then I freak out, my sister freaks out and my mom freaks out. We're all just freaking out like, why are you cuffing my dad? Because he was literally home with my mom the whole time. And my uncle was there too. And the cops said, we have an eyewitness report and you fit the description. The description was black male with long hair. The only part of the description my dad fit was being black. So they end up detaining my dad and throwing him in the back of a cop car. So the police handcuffed my dad and they threw him in the back of a cop car. And after we all got done freaking out, my mom ended up contacting our neighbor. And she let him know that the police were trying to accuse my father of breaking into his house. And y'all want to know what my neighbor had to say about that? He was like, if he didn't do it, then he won't be found guilty for it. I just want the right person to be held accountable, and I don't know if he did it or not. Excuse me? Excuse me? So basically, he told my mom that he thought my dad was capable of breaking into his house, and thought that he probably did it. Meanwhile, we're shocked as fuck. Like, we've been family friends for years, and you really think he would do you like that? Then finally, the eyewitness shows up, and she ends up telling the cops that it wasn't my dad. But then, the cops tried to accuse my uncle, because he was at our house too. Try to say he could fit the description. But the witness shut that down real quick too. Then our neighbor tried to apologize. My dad forgave him, but I said, Don't be trying to double back, I already decided to.